When the Shad Bush Blooms by Carla Messenger with Susan Katz, illustrated by David Kevin Taker and Fadden, and read aloud by Mr. David Mercaldo. My whole family lives close to the land and to each other through the cycle of the seasons. My grandparents' grandparents walked beside the same stream where I walk with my brother, and we can see what they saw. Deer leap in the woods, hawks fly in circles overhead, frogs splash and turtles sun themselves. In early spring, when the shad bush blooms, like a white lace veil, we go fishing. Dad smiles when my brother or I catch a shad. We roast the fish, and everyone enjoys it, especially the dog. When the deer shed their winter coats and geese honk on the pond, Dad and my brother clear the land for our garden. Mom and I sing as we plant the corn, and the baby coos, shaking her rattle. When the berries ripen, dangling like tiny hearts, we go berry picking. My brother and I race to see who can pick the fastest. The baby tastes her first berries. Her smeared face makes me laugh. <laughs> when the air hums with the wings of bees, my brother and I chase the crows from our garden. Together we gather honey. My brother ducks when a bee buzzes too close. I lick from one finger a drop as sweet as summer. When tall stalks rustle and the ears of corn have grown fat, we roast corn with our friends. While Grandma carefully takes her corn off the cob, I gobble mine fast. The baby plays with a new doll, and my brother scores a goal for his team. When grasshoppers patter in the fields, and the evenings echo with insect song, we enjoy the autumn harvest. Mom finds a pumpkin so big she can hardly carry it. Grandma shows the baby a beautiful gourd. My brother and I catch grasshoppers. When the leaves fly like red and yellow wings and nuts tumble from the trees, Dad makes the house snug and warm before cold weather. My brother and I rake a huge pile of leaves and jump in. When gray skies drop flakes that glitter like falling stars, my brother and I climb the hill. Grandpa gives us a push at the top, and we fly down. The dog races after us, barking. When the days grow short, and trees creak and crack with the cold, Grandma mends our winter clothes, and Grandpa tells us all stories. While we settle in, Mama fixes a snack. I ask to hear my favorite story twice. When ground squirrels dig in the drifts of snow and birds perch on frozen branches, the boys start a snowball fight with the girls. Mom stocks the house with food. My brother and I remember to share with the animal people. When spring peepers chirp their froggy songs, we go on a trip with Grandma to gather maple sap. The baby tastes her first spring treat. I talk to a frog on a tree trunk. As the seasons circle around once more, my brother and I walk to the stream. We watch for the shad bush to bloom again, as my grandparents' grandparents did. The end. About the Leni Lenape. Before contact, our people, the Leni Lenape, which means first real or original people lived in a vast forest that covered parts of what are now called Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and Connecticut. We were hunters, fishers, and farmers, and our villages were located along the banks or tributaries of a river that we call Lenape Wittetuk, the river of the people. The Europeans renamed our river the Delaware in honor of Sir Thomas West III, or 12th Baron de la War, Governor of Virginia. Because we lived along the river, they called us the Delaware Indians. Our people belonged to many clans, including turkey, turtle, wolf, deer, and bear. 
Each of our villages was independent of the others, and our ways of living varied according to the climate and ecology of our particular location. But we were one people, all speaking dialects of a single language, part of the large Algonquian family of languages. Our Lenape people were generous and welcomed the strangers to our homeland. By the mid 1600s, we were trading with the strangers. We gave them food, furs, and hides, and they gave us brass and iron pots and metal knives and axes. But by the beginning of the 1700s, the abundant land that had fed us and taken care of us for centuries was suffering. While market hunters were killing off our game animals, farmers and lumbermen were clear-cutting our forests and damming, polluting, and overfishing our rivers and streams. And eventually, the settlers' encroachment made life impossible for us and forced most of us to migrate north to Canada or west to places from Ohio to Oklahoma. While some of us remained here, our lives were very difficult, and by the 1900s we were hiding in plain sight and struggling to survive. Only recently, in the late 20th century, have we begun to reclaim our language and histories, our wisdom and knowledge. We are reclaiming our ceremonies and songs, our stories and art. We are reclaiming and cultivating our medicine plants. We are reclaiming our old ways of making and using flint, stone, bone, and wood tools. We are reclaiming our old ways of making beautiful deerskin clothing with naturally dyed quill work. Although we work in the modern world as truck drivers, teachers, factory workers, and chiropractors, we are reclaiming how to live in the natural world. Look around. We are still here. We continue to practice our people's traditions and to follow the circle of the seasons. About the Lenape Seasons Unlike the European calendar, which assigns a fixed number of days to each month, sun, moon, and the natural world have also guided our lives. For countless generations, we have followed the cycles of fishing, hunting, planting, tending, gardens, and taking in the harvest. We named each cycle, each moon, for a significant aspect of nature, and each cycle brings its particular tasks and special pleasures.